All right, these are examples actually from the live session of looking up either using a table. Okay, so in this case, I looked in a Z table and found the Z of 1.27 is 0 0.8980. Um, surprisingly, I actually prefer looking up in a table than Excel because I always seem to forget the formulas in Excel. But remember when you're looking in a table, if you're looking for the area to the left of your Z value, that's exactly what you see in the table. If you want the area to the right of, which would be greater than, that would be one minus that value. Why one minus? Because the entire area has to add to one or 100%. So you can do this in Excel with the norm.dist. Open a parenthesis. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Dot S dot dist. Sorry about that. And notice here it says returns the standard normal distribution, has a mean of zero. So in other words, this is the probability value from the table. I open my parentheses. It wants my Z value. So I click on 1.27. Comma, cumulative says, do you want to add up all that area? Cer oops, certainly I do. So I say true. And then I press enter and I get the same answer that I got by looking it up in the table. Um, you could just do one minus that value, but sometimes you may not want to even be bothered. What if you're just looking for the probability that it's greater than? So you could just do equals one minus and then type your formula in again. So the norm.s.dist the Z value, and once again, I want it to add from the greater than all the way out to infinity, which is the same as one minus the less than value. All right, sometimes you're given an area and you need that Z value. So Excel will do this for you, or you could look up and find in, within the table, remember these are four digit value, so you could look up and find 0 0.9500 from the table, or Excel has the equal norm.s.inv for the inverse, and now you put the probability in, close your parentheses, and that tells me what that Z value would actually be. All right, then these last two examples differ in a very small but important way. If you have information, okay, you have an actual data value and you want to find the probability that this data value either falls less than, okay, some, some particular value based on a mean and a standard deviation or greater than, the only two differences here is this first example, you're not given a sample size, okay? So in this case, we're going to actually use the sample size. This one up here, you might say, yeah, I am. I'm just telling you in general that um, it carries a maximum of 16 passengers. This one, we're going to actually use it. So you can see the difference in the formulas. So unfortunately, you can't just tell Excel to give me my actual Z. So what I would do is I would go ahead and type in this actual formula. So my Z equals, open a parentheses because I want to do my X minus my mean first and then divide by my standard deviation. So that gives me my Z value and then I do the same thing that I did up here to find my probabilities. So this would be norm.s.dist. I'd use my Z and I would say true. And in this case, I am going to do just one minus that value since I do have the greater than there as well. All right, as mentioned, the only difference here is my denominator is going to be my standard deviation divided by the square root of my sample size. So I just have to be careful 
and open my parentheses for my numerator divided by, I'm going to put the entire denominator in parentheses. So my standard deviation over the square root of my sample size. And as you can see, this makes certainly a much bigger difference, okay, in my z value. And once again, I will use my norm DIST, my z, and I do want this to be cumulative. So as you can see, which which would make sense, and let me do the 1 minus this value, that if I'm dividing, so notice the difference here. Let's, let's say we're looking at the probability greater than. Look how much larger this value is. Well, if, if you think about it, why was the z value, okay, why did this end up so much larger, is notice that when I'm dividing out my square root of my sample size, that's making my standard deviation, the denominator, smaller, right? And so when the, small, the denominator is smaller, then the numerator is going to actually lead and be a larger value. But once again, you're free to use the tables, which I tend to, uh, to look up the z-values in the tables, or as you can see, Excel will do the work for you.